On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent, he's he's done working. Uh, yeah, and apparently it's hot in Alaska. That doesn't sound right. Well, it is when you're grinding all these realms. Uh, Amazon had something to show me this week. Doubt it. And I should probably hit the little soundbite button for the intro right now. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 218 for Thursday, the 27th of June, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, this is my microphone, and that's Kent's... uh, This is my microphone, this is my microphone? Yeah, anyway. Uh, There are many like it, but this one is mine. (laughs) This one's for podcasting and this one's for uh, podcasting. (laughs) <laughs> I, I guess that really falls down the more you go with it, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's not for singing or any of those other things. I don't, I don't know, yep. man. Um, but it definitely is for podcasting because yes. it is Thursday night. It, it is. is ritual misery time. Yes, my favorite time of the week. Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize or congratulate the video viewers out there because my window is open, so this light is flooding in, and you can barely see me on my video, which is either a really good thing or a really bad thing, and either way, you're twisted. Thank you for being a part of our show. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have any goddamn air conditioning in our house. It's 84 degrees outside, so the air that's coming into the house is actually not really cooling me off, but at least there's a bit of a breeze sometimes. And that's all the relief I can hope for uh, for the next, I, I don't know, it's been this way for a few days now, and it's going to be like this for a few more. We're actually, we're, we're getting weather warnings uh, that the extreme heat is melting the glaciers too fast and might be eroding the walls of rivers, the oh banks my. of rivers, yeah. And wow. And just, just for perspective, it is two degrees warmer here right now than in Lexington, South Carolina. And just as humid. Jeez, dude. I, this is... I hate South Carolina, and I'm having to deal with a week of it here. Like, fuck this. this is it heard you. It heard you talking shit, so it came to visit. Yeah, well, it can go fucking. It can go fuck itself. <laughs> oh man, that that reminds me of European summers. When I lived in Germany, we we didn't have air conditioning either. Like, no one had air conditioning. I think grocery stores had air conditioning. <laughs> Maybe the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> like there, there's no AC in Europe for the most part. And uh, yeah, it got pretty damn hot sometimes in the summer. Yeah. We we have a portable one upstairs, like one that you plug in the wall and has a little vent to go out the window and blows the hot air out the window. Right, right. So you can kind of keep a small area cool. And it's on the middle floor because nobody's in the bedrooms right now and the basement's kind of cooler except for my office because, well, I have to have the door closed for noise. And I've got like 500 electronics in here that are all just miniature heaters, just keeping it fucking mm-hmm. balls hot in here. Yep. And that's the curse so, of a podcaster or just general technophile. Yeah. And of course, the not that we have AC, but even if we had it, I wouldn't be able to use it right now because of the noise. So oh, there's right. there's no winning. That's, there's no there's no winning. But anyway, um, hey, uh, what is this about you not working no more, dude? Like, uh, it, I'm down. I'm I'm good with it. What are you gonna do afterwards? Do you need a job? I might have a position for you to fill. <sighs> uh, man, I wish it was permanent. <laughs> Tomorrow's my last day of work, and t- until two weeks later, I'm taking some time off work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I mm. Well, your, your birthday's next week, so yeah. that's Wednesday. Then Thursday is a federal holiday. Then Friday is like a liberal leave day because of the all the other shit. So you basically have really only taken two unscheduled days off. Right, exactly. So I figured, okay, do I want to to go to work for those two days, or do I want to spend two days of leave and get nine straight days off? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> all of that. Make all of that happen, yeah. Um, no. and that was always the good thing about this is the only holiday we have in the summertime. You have Memorial Day, then you have Labor Day, and the only thing in between <laughs> is Fourth of July. And it's not even like dead square in the middle. It's kind of front loaded, you know, because then you got to go through almost all of July and all of August. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. when you want some time off, is in the middle of August, no matter where you are in the world, because it's either freezing cold, like you know, in the in the southern hemisphere. 
or it's just <laughs> stupid hot. Uh, global warming is awesome, so let's do that. Mm. Um, yeah, and August is like the the slowest month, and then you start rushing into the holiday season. So, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, holiday season always, man. It's I don't like the holiday season. <laughs> I like Halloween, but then everything after that is just. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Thanksgiving. I like Thanksgiving a lot, actually. <laughs> and, and I like Christmas. And even New Year's is fun, right? But the yeah. the just chaos that is that's brought along by the, the holidays just I don't know, man. You got me ah, we're only halfway through the year. It's not time for that crap yet. <laughs> uh, we are halfway through the year, so it is time for us to start talking about a few things. One summer vacation. Uh, to um, the Streamathon, which I've already started procuring some uh, some support for from some big names. This year hasn't been as easy as I would have liked to have been to do little mini events, but I'm still planning on doing the big thing at the end of the year. And um, yeah, so that brings us to if you have ideas for the Streamathon or want to get in on that, now is the time to start looking at uh, what time slots you might want and what you might want to do. As far as summer vacation, there will be no show next week because of Independence Day. Mm, mm -hmm. We don't celebrate Fourth of July on this show. We celebrate Independence Day. And my birthday. Uh, And his birthday on Wednesday, (laughs) so he'll be too hungover on Thursday to do the show anyway. And then, my God, if I was hungover at eight p.m., like Jesus, that's uh, a. Is is that a challenge to yourself? Because it might be. I see that going poorly. All right, challenge accepted. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the following week, I may or may not be in D.C. for a week. So I may or may not be available to do a show, depending on when my work things are going on on Thursday, because the last one is Thursday. If I am on, it will be from uh, Richard Gunther's house, because that's where I'll be staying if I if I go. And if not, then I'll be here at the house. So, hmm. Mm. Yeah, so that's, okay. that's that's kind of the update on what's going on for the next two weeks for Ritual Misery. It's been kind of a chaotic oh. summer, and well, it's just going to continue for a little bit while longer. And I I I heard from a little birdie that uh, we're going to have another guest soon. Yeah, the, the return of Tay Allen. Oh yes, yes, I I heard that. I heard that. I I, I wasn't sure if that was official or not, but but birdies are uh, birdies are weird like that. Yeah, it's official, but it's not scheduled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So it's a it's a no, or a yes. Yeah, no, no, no. She no, <laughs> she's excited to be on. She cannot wait to come back on. Uh, it's really on us to to get it scheduled um, because it's gonna be kind of gonna be kind of crazy over the next couple of weeks, like you said. So I don't want to schedule her for a time and then we end up not doing it like yeah. like I did to our last guest. <laughs> Yeah. Although uh, the the good news with all this is, if we're not doing a show next, well, we won't be doing a show next week. And then if we end up not doing a show after that, we will definitely be caught up with releases, because the whole production cycle has been a week or so behind, two weeks behind for a while because of earlier chaotic things going on in life. So, um, right, yeah. And uh, Scuzz McTave says uh, we need more awkward on the show, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, man, have you ever heard of the Amazon Echo Show? Yes, they didn't. They just release like a new one or announce yeah. a new one. Yeah, it's the the third version of mm-hmm. the Echo Show. It's called the Amazon Echo Show Three, Five, right? The Amazon Echo Five. Three. Five. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the third version. You just said it yourself. This should be the Amazon <laughs> Echo Three. Yeah, I know. That's why they called it Five. Uh, did Jeff Bezos take a tour of Microsoft <laughs> yeah. or something? Like, cause is this, well, I mean, is this like a Windows yeah. Nine is actually Windows Ten kind of? It's like there's no Windows Nine. Right. There's no there's no uh, iOS. No, I mean, I'm uh, iPhone Nine. Right. There's no Amazon Echo Show Four. Or three. Or three. I didn't even realize there's a two, to be honest with you. So, well, it's just a. It's, so it's, in my mind, they're going from one to five. So they're just counting by fours. <laughs> yeah, actually, so they they call it the five because it's a five point five inch screen. Now, how big was the old one? Ten point one or something like that. So it's like a mini. Why not just call it the Amazon Show Mini? Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck these names, dude! All this shit pisses me off. All of it yeah. pisses me off. Um, 
so I I found out about the Echo Show Five kind of by mistake. I got on the internet looking for a new alarm clock. Okay. Uh, the the, uh, <laughs> the most challenging thing to occur in my entire day doesn't matter the day. Uh huh. Most challenging thing that I do every day is, is wake up. Wake up. Yep. It well, is. I, oh, oh, well, um, I'm going to clarify. Okay. Because I can tell you from personal experience, it is not difficult to wake you up. You are uh, not a heavy sleeper that is difficult to wake up. In, 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 in fact, sometimes you're a very light sleeper that is too easy to wake you up when, when unintended. Um, really? I will say, however, that you are a very difficult person to get functionally awake. <laughs> okay. All right. Because uh, yeah. you, 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 can, you can reptilian brain it all fucking day. You can, you can be <laughs> awake, hit the pisser, and climb back into bed, and you won't even know it happened. Yeah, that's that's fair. Like your id takes over, you piss and you go back to sleep and, and your fucking your super id and your ego didn't were never there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like they're playing cards in Dreamland. Or yeah. Like that. Um so I'm I'm, or, I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify it's not it's not hard to wake you up. It's hard to get you functionally awake. Right, right. Uh, so I, I I was like, you know what, I I I think I could use a new alarm clock. Let me see what's out there. Well I so I Got into Google and like nonstop on the um, on the search results was a, about this thing called Amazon Echo Show Five, uh, a, a smart alarm clock something 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 like best in show this and and like uh, wonderful functionality amazing for the price like all these different that things. would be an amazing title of a product the Amazon Show something something something. Right, yeah, that, but, but you'd, you'd, better than five. You'd, you'd have to urbanize it though, right? So it'd be the Amazon show something, something, something. <laughs> you'd, you'd, just you'd wake, have to you'd wake you up to porn every day. <laughs> um, anyway, so I so I clicked on reviews for it, and I was like, okay, that oh, sounds. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm just going through my mind on this, okay. It asks you, hey, hey uh, Amazon show, uh, uh, set an alarm for 5 o'clock. And, and it comes back with, okay, I'll set an alarm for 5 o'clock a.m. How, how how bad do you need to wake up? And you're like, <laughs> ah, you know, it'd be nice, like, you know, for a jog or something. And it's like, okay, cool. And then at 5 o'clock, it wakes you up to, like, you know, it, it comes on. There's a little sound, little chime, ching, 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 and a little picture of, like, a puppy dog or something, you know. And then, right. then the next day you're like, hey, uh, 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 wake me up at, wake me up at six. And it's like, well, how bad do you need to get up? And you're like, uh, I mean, this is like for a job interview. I have to be up at six. It's like, all right, all right, cool. And then it has a little, uh, it, 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 it comes on a little, alarm, a little chime, jim, jim, jim. and then it's like, Bang! you know, the whole klaxon, right? And then you look at it and it, it's a, it's a picture of like two big fat dudes fucking, Oh my god! Like, cause then you, you like your brain shocks. It's like, oh, what the hell? Oh, turn that off, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that that might work actually. There you go. We need it. We need that app. Somebody write that app for the Amazon show. <laughs> it, it might have it because you've got you've got all kinds of things that you can you can program this thing to do. It's it's pretty incredible. So it's it's a full up uh, Amazon uh, assistant device right okay. it does yeah. all the things it's a show so it's got a screen so you can see you know visuals not just in a, like an alarm clock face but it can you can see your calendar you can see photos you can you can help dude you can watch movies on amazon prime on this thing i uh, mean if you want your brain to hurt well yeah i mean i'm not saying you would necessarily want to but you can yeah uh but it, yeah it's got it's got so much functionality. It can it can be your hub for your like Nest Home stuff. Right. It can it, it attaches directly to your to your uh, Ring doorbell so that right. you say, "Hey, uh, Amazon assistant person, who's at the front <laughs> door?" And it'll show you like a live feed of your front door. You know, uh, it's 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 pretty cool, and it's only eighty bucks. Yeah, that's why I was like, "Wait, stop it!" Like the next cheapest version of this thing is like 130 bucks for like the old one yeah and it's like yeah you know what i'm i think i'm gonna go ahead and get one so i mentioned it to steph like later that that night like after dinner or whatever and she's like 
She's like, oh, what? And she's like listening to me. And then she pulls up the article. She's like, oh, my God. I was like, so I'm getting two then? <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> let's get two. So, yeah, so we got two of them. They arrived yesterday and uh, I've been playing with them. And I discovered that that uh, Amazon assistant person is a hell of a lot smarter than Siri. Yes. Oh, is is, is this your first first bout with the Amazon Alexa service? Uh, do, do, <laughs> do you not have another device? Do you don't have a dot or a? No, I don't have any of those things. Oh. I, I, yeah. So oh, welcome, welcome, Siri, to, welcome to the world. Where Siri will, you know, you could ask Siri almost anything. Like, what's five plus eight? Siri's response will be, "Here's what I found on the web for you." <laughs> it's like, are you? Fucking can can you be any less functional? So, so Amazon's assistant is quite a bit better at answering questions, and it's more fun to to mess with it and ask it silly stuff, right? Uh, but I found like, that when you it's like, hey uh, uh, Alexa, what's uh, what's five plus eight? And she's like, uh, the uh, it's it's thirteen, you idiot. Yeah, like, basically, yeah. Yeah, but I've I've noticed though when you when you really want it to do something like when you want your device to do something like bring up the settings for whatever it's like uh I don't think I can do that or just like you have to say the thing like if you're asking it general questions like you know hey what's the uh, what's the weather like on the highest mountain top of such and such country where it's like oh oh well I can tell you all about that you want to know more about it. But yeah. if you're just like, hey, do this basic function, it's like, oh, you didn't word it exactly 100% correctly. Mm -hmm. You didn't put the, the emphasis on the right syllable. So I have yeah. no idea what you're talking about right now. Here's the one that gets me is I've got a dot, not a dot, the full, the echo, the, the first generation echo upstairs, and I've got a dot in my bedroom. Mm. The dot in the bedroom is used mostly for turning on and off the uh, the smart light bulbs we have in the room. Um, because we're lazy fucking uh, Americans. We don't want to get up to turn the lights off so we can just tell Alexa to do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and um, when we have it set up so that when we receive a package or whatever, like the little ring turns from turns yellow. Mm. But I, n I can never remember what it's called. So I'll be like, uh, hey, give me my my announcements it's like oh would you like to make an announcement no i don't want to make an announcement. <laughs> uh g give me my uh give me my messages oh well if you hook up a phone blah 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 we can read your message oh uh, no no uh, then i uh, every time i have to ask it uh what does the yellow light mean and then she's like oh those are your notifications but it's only that fucking word yeah that shit pisses yep. me off and now i know that word because i've had to ask it like 500 times you know? that, that sounds right. That's going to be my experience if I if yeah. I even decide to keep speaking to it. <laughs> yeah. Um. And, and the, other, the the thing that I really like about it, it pisses me off because we have we have like ten of them in this house between all the kids and mm. everything else, like little dots and shit. People keep getting them for pres presents for Christmas and shit. Mm. If y'all have if you have them all hooked up to the same account, you can actually tell one to announce, mm -hmm. and it will play that announcement over all the others. So instead of yelling through the house, I can just be like, hey. Uh, announce that dinner's ready, and it'll be like, okay, and it just announces to all the others. Well, yep. everybody got pissed off and unplugged there, so it no, <laughs> doesn't announce to any of them. <laughs> wow, they'd rather get it on their phone. <laughs> See, with with the show, you can say drop in on yeah whatever room, and yeah. it'll like it, it, in. it plays a chime in that room, and then it says, um, it's like jump, yeah, and you're like, what when, the hell when is cool that? thing. One thing about the show five is it's got a it's got an actual physical shutter over the camera, uh, so that you know. So you don't have to tape you, it yourself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, but then why does it have a? Oh, I guess you can make video calls on it, right? Yeah. 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 You, you know, make video calls. It it acts as like a room monitor. Like you can you can set it to do all kinds of things. It's even yeah. got security functionality, where you can tell it like you know if if there's movement in this room, like let me know that yeah. kind of stuff. Um. Well, I tell you what I've been doing lately, dude. Uh, my little geeky thing of the week this week. You mm. know the you, you know what a, a tap game is? A tap game. Yeah. Oh, like like uh like like 
Farmville or whatever. Yeah, you know, those games. Uh, um, uh, Congregate or, makes a bunch of them. And uh, the one that I was... Uh, adventure... Ad, advin, adventure... Ad something... Mm-hmm. Uh, something but, like that was the first one I ever played. And you basically, you, you you buy some stuff and then you use that money to buy more stuff and you use that money to buy more stuff. And it just kind of, you know, and eventually, and, and there's no point to the fucking game. There is, there's, it's completely pointless. That, no, I mean, you, you, you're building, you're, you're, you're continuing to build. You're seeing how. Uh, yeah, much. sure. And then once in a while you can like hit this magic reset button. It takes away everything, but leaves you with a certain bonus. And then that bonus carries forward, but nothing else does. And you start over and, well. That sounds awful. It, 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 it really is. It's fucking stupid. Oh, my God, it's stupid. Um, so I've been playing Realm Grinder, which is one of these tap games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you hate your life. Yeah, it's on, it's on PC. And I'm going to bring it up to the screen now so you can see it. Um, and uh, it's, it's, there's, it's minimally graphic. It's just, it's completely it's it's really stupid is what it is. It's completely stupid. And I don't know why I keep playing it, but I do. Um and it's it's fun and I'm uh, there it's I hate these games. I don't know why I play them, but I constantly play them. Mostly because I don't have to pay attention to it for like hours. I can just come yeah. back to it, tap it a couple times and oh look, well, something's cool is going on. I mean I can see like if it's a you know, in your idol, whatever you're waiting for something, or you're like on hold with with a, a company or something like that. Right. You know, it's like it's like a fidget spinner, right? I can I can totally see that. But if you're one of those people that like like uh, you're watching the clock, like okay, my my farm is going to be done building it at three thirty seven. I got to be sure that <laughs> I, I can I, I need to wrap this meeting up or wrap this conversation up so I can run to my you yeah. Know, that that's a, that would be a problem. The only time I've ever been that hung up about one of these games was. Um, airline tycoon airplane tycoon something like that mm-hmm. and you and i were competing and it had four hour turns so it was a turn-based game but oh. every four hour four hours was another turn where you could take your actions oh right um and uh yeah i came in like fifth place on that only because i played it the entire time and i didn't give up <laughs> and it was it was like a out of two hundred people or something like that. You gave up like a weekend. You're like fuck this. I was like waking up at on the uh, every three hours and forty five minutes. Of course, I had a baby at the time too. It's when Autumn was born, so it like gave me oh, this right. reason to get up to to feed her, or change her, or whatever, and do my little turn and fall back asleep. And that was the first one. And I swore I'd never play a game like that again. Well, and this one's not even competitive. Like you're not playing against anybody. You're just literally tapping for no damn reason. Right. Um, yeah. The only time I was I was like that where I was like, you know, looking at the clock or getting out of bed at like 3 a.m. to to do a thing. I played this stupid ass game. It was a Facebook game like a million years ago. It was like when I first got my my Facebook account, I think. And there was this game where you like built a, a realm basically and you had to like defend your your village like you start with a village i guess and then you have mm. to defend it against attackers but the thing what like it's a, it's massively multiplayer yeah and you, you join a clan or whatever and then when like you would see like an attack coming in it's like two and a half days away because they're coming from the other side of the realm <laughs> right so you had to like call your banners right get your allies to come defend and you would call like you know, some of your, uh, you know, your, your satellite villages, whatever you'd call all of their yep. cavalry and everything back home. And then you, you knew when this attack was going to land. So it's like, you had to be ready for it so you could respond appropriately. It was, Oh my God. Yeah. It was fun, but Holy hell. No, never. It's a bunch of ever. bullshit stress. I don't need That's and Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, W Scott's one says it sounds like Farmville all over again. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not right, but you're not wrong. It's. <laughs> I, I think the the first lesson in this whole thing is it's completely fucking pointless, but it's free, so I'll click away and see what the little levels are, and it's fun. I just, I, I don't know. It's I I I hate them, and I can't get away from them. You know what? I, I'm really hoping to level up in a couple of weeks, man. Yeah. I, I really hope that we go from from third place to second place in a thing. Yeah. I think it's going to happen. 
I think it might. You think it might? I think it might clutch second place, dude. Like I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting confident. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see what Big Boy she has to say. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of June 24th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Pro tip, if you jumped off the bridge in Paris, you'd be insane. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Drunkards Gaming gets a sizable boost from Child's Play and Toy Story 4 and last place with $194.9 million. Team Game Night's in fifth place with $205.5 million. Team The Vod Squad's in fourth place with $251.4 million. Team Retro Misery's in third place with $540.2 million. Team Ever Drink is in second place with $773.3 million. And in first place, with $1,222,000,000, it's Team Movie Party. Let's well, use Dream Team Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of June 26, 2019. The reason I'm confident is Jay recorded that just a couple of days ago, and we've made three million dollars since then. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we still have we still have three movies in the theater. Yeah, they're still getting watched, so we're gonna trickle in some cash from those. But next weekend, Spider-Man: Far From Home is coming out. That's a two hundred million dollar movie. Maybe. I think it is. We'll and see. uh have a drink done with their they've been done with their movies. They don't have anything in the theater. So they're they're locked at seven hundred and seventy three million. Yeah. Like they're done. So all we have to do is make two hundred and thirty more million dollars. <laughs> Which I think we could do, man. Spider Man is gonna clean up. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Spider-Man has to clean up because that's the only thing we have left. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we still got other things out there like Secret Life of Pets. And and, uh, and why uh, is Spider-Man coming out on July 5th? Why not? It should be coming out on the 3rd. Yeah, but movies don't come out on Wednesdays. They do when they're big on Fourth of July weekend. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's going to make a lot of money next weekend. So we're going to close in on Have a Drink. Mm. Vod Squad is not going to catch us. DKG is not going to catch us. Game Night sure as hell isn't going to catch us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, DKG still got some. Uh, got. A movie out, uh, Lion King. That's gonna that's gonna keep them out of last place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, DKG is gonna surpass Bot Squad. I think that's I think that's a pretty much a sure thing. Yeah. Um, because, if we didn't uh, have Spider Man, they would be a genuine threat to our third place position. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Bot Squad has something called Yesterday uh, that nobody knows about. Um, yeah, some people have seen that, and it's uh, not so much. Yeah, Our hair is really, really bad, actually. <laughs> Hobbs, Hobbs and Shaw is gonna, it's gonna be good. That's gonna be a fun movie. I, I, I'm betting on that. Yeah. But whether it it makes a lot of money in the box office, uh, probably not, dude. I mean, it's yeah. like an action comedy. Those things make like maybe fifty million, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> and I, I think the big one is I, one I'm really interested in is it Chapter Two. First of all, I want to see it. <laughs> right. Second of all, I want to see if Movie Party, who's been stagnant lately, just mm-hmm. because of lack of movies, um, if they can hit that one point five. Yeah, that's gonna be if 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 it chapter two can bring in two hundred million, they'll be right on the cusp of one point five billion in yep. earnings. That's insane. And the the fact that we we're getting about a third of that it didn't didn't matter to me. Like I want I want I'm really hoping they'll hit that 1.5. Yeah, hell yeah, set that record high. Yeah. I mean, they they've already they blown away all records. They've blown Just, away all competition. That's for damn sure. Oh yeah, like it's yeah yeah, um, yeah. So that's it. I, I'm I'm saying I'm calling it right now. We're gonna get second place. Okay. Um, you know what uh, is not second place. Uh, our patrons? Our patrons. They are first in our hearts. Yeah, man. Uh, over at patreon.com slash ritual misery, there's a bunch of people that, that give us a buck. I think that's an indicator that they give a fuck about this show. Um, 
we typically take it that way. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's usually how it is. Um, here is a interesting thing. I know we're talking about our Patreon, uh, but breaking news: Apple's chief design officer Johnny Ive is leaving Apple. Uh, man, I okay. I heard this earlier today. He's starting his own company, and he's going to have Apple as the client. So, <laughs> what what are they doing? Apple news. Apple stock dropped one percent on the news in after hours trading. So here's my thing. You ready for this? This is my opinion of this. Yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm on pins and needles waiting to see why you interrupted the Patreon plug with Johnny Ive news. I don't think Apple's been listening to Johnny Ive for quite a while. Okay. But we listen to our patrons. Mm. And if you'd like to have a direct line to us, other than pretty much anywhere we are on the internet. <laughs> So a, prioritized, to... <laughs> a prioritized Q. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hell yes, man. You get pre shows, <laughs> post shows, exclusive interviews, stuff from the vault from like a million years ago before there was an internet. Hmm. Uh, all kinds of, of really neat stuff and, and some neat stuff to be announced soonish that's going to come at you at the end of the year. And that's exclusively for patrons. Oh, yeah? And, uh, and it's going to be uh, kind of a... Do I know about this? You do. You are the progenitor of the idea. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I told so you it's been a, patron, a long yeah. week. <laughs> if you're not a patron yet, uh, now's the time to get in there. Uh, check it out. <clears throat> Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Hey, man. Yeah. There's another button you need to push. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Zach Morris called mm. and wants his phone back. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. That's right. If you guys have not seen that YouTube channel, like you got to do it right now. <laughs> well, not right, not right now. After you finish listening to this show. And, and watch the debates. And then check out Zach Morris' trash. Yes, yes, because Zach Morris is trash. What a, gr oh my God, what a great channel that is. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> Especially so, if you like Saved by the Bell. If that was one of your shows that you really liked when you were growing up, Zach Morris' trash is, it's, it's awesome. It's really yeah, awesome. So, so Zach Morris called wanting his phone back. Obviously, this is the, the Zach Morris phone, the giant brick phone from the early 90s that was like yep. like the size of a Brick. boot <laughs> yeah like a yeah like a giant cmu building brick <laughs> for like corporate construction yeah uh and it was made of like the hardest awesome. plastic ever like you could you could yeah. launch this shit into space and it would come back in the same shape <laughs> yeah this thing was gigantic anyway so that was that was early 90s technology yeah uh, that that Zach Morris phone. So what we're going to talk about is '90s tech, and your job is to tell me when I when I tell you a, a, a name of a technology or a a device or or something that <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to tell me was this technology released to the public before or after we joined the Air Force? Oh, so August '95 would be the cutoff Zach. there. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So your answers are before or after. Now this, I, I will preface this by saying, I did spend time in California as I was growing up, and but I did graduate high school in June. Well, I graduated in, in June, July, July of uh, ninety five. You graduated in May. Uh, <laughs> Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had a, you had a, a slight delay. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, a, a, sl a slid to the to the right just a little bit, um, but th there's a lot of context on when this stuff is. Yeah, because of, it's during that that primal time right there between you know that that uh, ninety five was a big year in my life because it was my eighteenth or well seventeenth full year I guess, um, but is that is that transition year because your first year is not a full year calendar wise. Anyway, 
1995 is a huge year, so I should have a large amount of context for it. I'm guessing that about half these items came out in 95 or were released in 95, just to make it more difficult. But <laughs> uh, there's a certain handicap because I was in Indiana, and we didn't have fucking MTV. Well, I, mean, I want my... Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Oxford, Indiana didn't, didn't have MTV. Every right, town right. around us had it. Yes. But but we, we weren't cool enough, apparently, in Oxtucky. Yeah. Man, I got that damn song in my head now. <laughs> little dire Straits for you. Yes. All right, man. Here's your first one. Tell me, did this come out before or after we joined the Air Force? Texting. 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 Like SMS? Yes. Just Texting. Ba- basic SMS. Yes. Not iMessage, not like photos or anything, just like just texting. Hmm. On pagers before, on cell phones after. Uh, okay, so so texting as a technology. Before or after? I'd have to say before, because you could always, well, you could send uh, text messages. Yes. To pages. Yes. It, it, the T9 on the phone to get the little. It was available. It was available to the public beginning 25th of December, 1993. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's one for you. Okay. TiVo. 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 Yeah. TiVo uh, is a DVR innovator. TiVo is after because I think they made became the company in '96. Okay. Well, the uh, the device was available to the public beginning 30 November 1999. Okay. So barely made it in the '90s. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was actually surprised that this was even '90s tech. I was like, "What the fuck? Like that seems like mid to late 2000s." Yeah. But (laughs) yeah. All right, um, the internet. The inter well, um, mm, available to the public. The internet itself. The internet available to the public. Uh, and I'm not talking about the capability to to use a modem to call another computer. I mean the, the world internet. wide web. So yes, the World Wide Web, the Internet with a capital I. Before. It was that year though, twenty eight January, nineteen ninety five. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Although the paper was released in ninety four, I think. But anyway. You know the the original website, like the original hypertext document. Is still online in its original URL. Yeah, it's it's a sad thing. No, it's pretty great. Like it's it's no. so interesting to read it. It's it's rough. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's like it's HTML 1.0. There's no formatting. <laughs> it's, it's like here's text. No. Blah. There's there's text and there's hyperlinks. Yes. Well, and I think that's it. I think there might be text size. Maybe not though. I can't remember if there was text size or maybe even bolding. There, there's um, nothing beyond the basic ASCII, though. There's right. No, yep. There's no special characters. Like, you know, there's no GIFs and shit. There's no graphics and there's no... It's just... Here you go. Yep. Yep. Just All right. text. All right. Next, Next, please. What about Java? Mm. As in the, the programming language, Java. Um, I'm going to say after... Is that a 94 thing too? It was 95. It came out, it was available to the public immediately after the internet. The internet was available to the public in January of 95, February, uh, 26 mm. February to be exact, of 1995. Java. Yeah, yeah I was thinking it was it was maybe a year after, but yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I remember Sun Microsystems before they even made Java. They were they were making hardware. Can, and can we just say that Java is as usable as it is is still trash? 
Java. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never tried to program in it, but but trying to use like a like I don't know one of, like one of their VMs or right. or something like yeah like fuck Java yeah I don't like Java at all. All right, man, uh, something a little more fun than Java. Nintendo sixty four. Oh, the Nintendo sixty four came out after we joined the military because I bought one on day one at Shaw. That was in at November ninety six. <clears throat> right, no, uh, November ninety six. June. June 10th of June, 1996. Okay. So I don't know if that was Japan's release date or America's release date. I, I, I know, know I took leave that day. Jesus. And I bought it at the BX, and I was the only person in line to get one. They only had three. I bought that, Super Mario 64, because it didn't come with the console, and Zelda. No, wow. no, I went I went downtown to the mall and pre-ordered Zelda, because it didn't come out day one. It came out like a month later or something like that. Wow. Okay. All right, your next one, genetic engineering. Oh, uh, so so think like um, like crops, like modifying crops. Okay, okay, that'd be before. You say before. Yep. How, how far before do you think that is? Um, uh, depends on how, what level of genetic you want to consider, but like, uh, I mean, they've been performing ex- uh, experiments with, with just basic botany and things like that for a uh, hundred years or 200 yeah, years or so. Well, but, but as but we're, not talk- we're not just talking about like breeding two different things together to see, you know, breeding a poodle with a, with a German shepherd to see what the puppies look like. Right. I'm talking about like actually getting in there and modifying genes and things. Oh, like Monsanto kind of shit. Yes. Um, probably 93, 94. It was right about that yeah. time. Yeah. Gen- uh, 18th of January, 1994 hmm. was when that was a- made available to for public use. All right, man. What about DVDs? Ooh. Available for public use. Yes. I believe that was a 97 thing, but it didn't hit widespread until 2001. So your answer is after then, right? Yes. You say after. All right. Okay. Yes. It was after, but it wasn't that late. It was 29th of September, 1995. Oh, shit. Okay. Early after we came in the military. Yeah. Yeah, damn. I remember the, the first time I heard about DVDs, I was in the IGA in Oxford looking at a magazine and talking to Patrick Mittiff. And I'm like, yeah, look at this thing. They're going to make CDs, but like for movies. Oh, my God. <laughs> what was the first DVD you bought? Oh, my God. First DVD I bought, I ooh, I think it was Armageddon. <laughs> because, I bought a, because I bought a DVD player and a surround sound system on the same day at the BX in Kadena, I think. Yeah. Oh, my Looking gosh. At, and I wanted something that, first of all, a movie that I know that I like, mm. and also something that's got great sound that that's going to test out that surround sound. So of course, a Michael Bay movie is going to be full of explosions and right. all, all kinds of loud shit. So, yeah, it was a good purchase. Um, my first one was before I went to Kadena, which might have been about the same time that you bought yours because I got there almost a year after you did. Um, it was. Shit. Now, it's one of two movies, and I bought both of them like within a couple days of each other. Mm-hmm. Saving Private R- Private Ryan mm-hmm. and Metallica mm-hmm. S and M. Oh my god! Yeah, and wow. I, I don't remember. I think Saving Private Ryan was the first one, and then I bought S and M not long after. I didn't even own a DVD player. I had a DVD drive, a two speed DVD drive in my computer. <sighs> So the only place I could watch it was on my computer until a year later when I got my first surround sound and my first DVD player. Jesus. So that was a that was a 2X read. Yes. Definitely did not write. Did not. No. There's not a <laughs> it, I don't even think it wrote uh, CDs. I think it was just a DVD reader. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't read CDs either, but no, it probably, <laughs> it probably read CDs. It, it read but. CDs but like at like 10 <laughs> speed. Like it wasn't even <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. yeah, it was awful. Um What cash, man? <laughs> yeah, and and it was it was it pissed me off because the DVD like the software, Power DVD or whatever it was, um, oh. wouldn't even let you access. Like the menus were funny, so you couldn't even access the additional features. 
so you, you could if you went through if you went through uh, if Windows I, Explorer. If, if, well, encryption Probably. was encryption was funny back then. So, um, but yeah, it was it was awful. Like I would have, oh my god, I would have died for VLC back then. Oh, just pop right? in there and let it play. Uh, but yeah, that's. I should, have, I should have that technology <clears throat> on this. On this, when did VLC? Come <laughs> It's right about the time we got tired of whipping the llama's ass. That's when VLC came out. <laughs> yeah. Winamp really whips the llama's ass. Yep. All right. Is it a whip sound, too, or something? I don't, I don't remember. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. So I want to inform you. That was seven questions. Yeah. You are, you've got six out of ten, right? You've already got the D. Boom. Well, you've gotten the D already. Yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see if you can get past the D. <laughs> see if you can get over the D. Uh, <laughs> once you get the D, there's no getting over D. <laughs> All right. Tamagotchi. Ooh, shit. Did you ever? Well, first of all, did you ever have one? Did you ever? I. A, well, I didn't have the standalone. I had the Sony PlayStation um, uh, uh, memory card Tamagotchi. Oh, what? Yeah, it was a thing. It was, but wow. but I don't know what happened to that. And I and I got it from a dude at Kadena for like I don't know. It was like like twenty bucks or something like that. I needed a memory card. I didn't even care about the little the little game display thing on it and the little buttons and stuff. I just needed the memory card and they were out of the BX and you know how they'd be out for like three years at the BX. Um so I got it for like twenty bucks and ended up playing that more in in you know what it had a it had a uh, it had like three games on it. It had like Chocobo and Tamagotchi and something else. And I only ever wow. played the Chocobo one. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, okay. So uh, before, after, I'm gonna say after. Why not? I already got the D. I don't care. <laughs> You've gotten over the D. Um, yes, yes. It came out the first of April of 1996. Nice. Yeah. All right. This is a this is a weird one. Smart pills. So so let me explain. When I say smart pills. I'm talking about the like capsules that uh, they're basically like time release. Like it, it the pill knows how much dosage to give you, how often. So, smart pills. Uh, I'll take smart pills for two hundred, Alex. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say, four. <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, I have this is. Uh, because now, like almost all medication that you get prescribed is a smart pill now. Like that's right. Basic, and now. it's not that the pill knows; it's the pill's designed to dissolve in such a way that you get a a, a metered dose. Um, yeah. I'm gonna a say metered dose. I'm gonna say before. All right, you think smart pills were before we joined the air force? You'd be correct, sir. Uh, they made their public debut tenth of January, nineteen ninety-two. Oh, so it was a while before. Yeah, so they've been out for a little bit. I'm glad I got that right. Military. Yeah, I mean, not that we know. Like, how do we know this? Unless, you know, unless we're watching TV commercials now with time release technology. Ask your doctor if yeah, a lot will work for you. The the only thing that uh that really got me on that was that. In Indiana, as I was detasseling corn, I'd have to do uh, uh, allergy number pills. Two? Oh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Never did number two. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you snuck away and did number one. Oh go sure. Ahead, go ahead of me, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just tying my shoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tying my shoe, dude. We saw there's fucking butt weed over there. We know what you're doing over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. So your final. Technology was this released to the public before or after you and I joined the Air Force in August 1995? Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color. Not not Super Game Boy, not Game Boy Micro, not not Nintendo DS. We're talking about Game Boy Color. 
radical new technological device? I'm going to say before. You think Game Boy Color came out before we joined the Air Force? I feel like I remember playing... Uh, 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 Patrick might have had that Super Nintendo uh, Game Boy adapter that you could put a Game Boy game in and it would play it. And I think I remember playing games on that that were actually in color natively and not just the bullshit colors that it assigned it, which would put it either before we left, before, well, yeah, before we left for the Air Force or during like Christmas break coming back. But usually on like Christmas breaks when we would go back home, we didn't take time to play Nintendo games. We were too busy chasing chicks yeah so i <laughs> i remember exactly what you're talking about yeah uh, wait, first of all let me do this <laughs> game boy color came out in, in october of 1998 oh okay so what you're remembering is the super game boy which was the super nintendo cartridge that plugged in and then you could put a, a game boy cartridge inside of it and then you can yeah. play it on your console with your with your SNES controller in color, even though Game Boy games were black and white or well, more, they're, more like green green and yellow or whatever. Were green scale. There were four four yeah. tones of green scale. Yeah. Now what you're talking about, I remember this. The the natively colored Game Boy cartridges, the first one of which I believe was Donkey Kong or Donkey Kong Country or something to that effect. Yeah. For the Game Boy was programmed on the cartridge to have color, even though the Game Boy itself did not have the capability of destroying color. Displaying color. Yes. So you, so you had to use it in a Super Game Boy. Yeah, Super Game Boy. To get the On color. your SNES to be able to see the the colors. Got you. Yep. I uh, remember that. Crew just saying Kirby was too. Yeah, okay. That, that does sound about right. All right, so I got a B. I got, yes, I got, you got eighty percent. Good job. That's like that's the best you've done in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> you've been getting the D for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> oh um, man, this this all got me thinking, dude, about uh, technology, like yeah. stuff that we used to have, stuff that we used to think was was freaking awesome and shit that we used to hate. Mm. I'll, I used to hate? I'll start. Oh, okay. I'll start because I feel very, very strongly about this. Okay. Okay. Zip drives. Uh, zip 100s, zip 250s. Yep. yep. Zip drives seemed really cool, man. They, they can weren't. hold so much more than a floppy. They weren't. <laughs> They were fucking unreliable. They yeah. held a lot of information. Yeah, I mean, you yep. could, you could put like a, a zip two fifty, which was one of the smaller sizes, would hold like two hundred times more than a floppy dr disk. Yes. So all of your floppies, right? You could just throw them out. You just copy them over to a zip. Well, you could if it, you'd still be doing it right now. <laughs> because it was right. so fucking slow. Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. Like you could you could have a movie like a 200 megabyte movie on your computer, which was like huge back in the day because you only had one gigabyte hard drive. Um, and you could put it onto a zip drive, and it'd still be going like six months later. Yeah, like it was yeah. so fucking slow. It was like this this amazing technology that it it, it never had a chance of fulfilling this prophecy. You know, you didn't have that opportunity until USB came out, which was amazing, by the way. Still, I think, the biggest uh, uh, jump forward in, in computer technology for consumers. Um, but by the time you had that, you had huge fucking drives, comparatively. You know, right. you yeah. had so 80 gig hard drives as, and shit. Yeah, it wasn't as useful. And also, we had the internet by then, so you could just, like... Find it. email something or right. yeah or just yeah exactly it's not sitting on a server somewhere you can just download it again whatever it was um yeah yeah uh, what was what was the connector for that was it ps2 did it go through a, a ps2 port well it depends on which one you got because they had firewire um and oh, they god yeah they had firewire they had parallel they had scuzzy i think most of them were scuzzy oh 
Oh, scuzzy. Yeah. Speaking of things that I don't miss. And I think there was even one or two that had cereal, which I don't know why you would have a cereal port to anything that had to transfer more than one K. But <sighs> like, and, and, and that was another thing. When you went to buy a zip drive, um, say you wanted the blue one, the classic blue one with the little oblong slot in it, you know? And yep, yep. yeah, that, that one was only parallel. If you wanted the one that was scuzzy, you had to go with the red one. The parallel, that's usually put your printer in the parallel. Yes. Port. Yes. Now, Firewire, it seems to me like that's the way to go. It, it would have been if you had a Mac. Mm. But mm. to get Firewire on a PC at the time, you had to buy a separate Firewire card. And then that's all right. the drivers would be all fuckered up because your motherboard wouldn't support the Firewire. And uh, Yep. It was a nightmare. Fuck zip drives. Yep. Uh, zip drives are canceled. Dude, something <laughs> something that I don't fucking miss at all is dot matrix printers. Yeah, you need to crank the volume on that by like ten. And if you had, if you were sitting in an office where there were two dot matrix printers going for some reason, no, you need hearing protection. I think it's like OSHA standard. You had to have hearing protection. Oh, that shit's and, awful. And if you if you were doing it in um in a uh, uh, carbon copy, <laughs> oh my god, it dampened the sound a little bit, but you were guaranteed a jam every ten pages. Oh yeah, oh ten. Yeah, you made it to ten. <laughs> well, that's the guarantee. Like the, you, there, <laughs> it's not possible to print more than ten pages in carbon copy without a jam on a dot matrix printer. It's physically and fucking possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dot matrix, dude. I, I, I agree that it was necessary at the time. Yeah. It was pretty fast for for what it was doing. Well, Putting it, one dot every pixel. Well, because was. it had that plate of what, like nine or whatever, a plate of twelve or some shit, and it just go down and, and hit it where it needed to hit it. Yeah, um, yeah. As it, as it scrolled through, you know, and the all. <laughs> you know, the alternative to that, well, and here's the thing about Dometrics, all right? It sounded the same when it jammed as when it was operating. <laughs> yeah, awful. <laughs> you couldn't tell. And the alternate alternate to that was that fucking spinny ball thing that, you know, that had like all the characters like pressed <gasps> into it and it, it'd go down. Yes. And, oh my God. God. What was that thing even called? I don't, I don't, it was like the it was like the fastest worst typewriter in the fucking world, <laughs> and and oh and and to replace the tapes on that because it had tapes like typewriter tape, you know, you had to replace the tapes and the tapes were stupid. Yep, yep. And it flaked off everywhere, and you could just erase the fucking page. Like you could just oh, that's not a B anymore. That's an incomplete because there's no grade. Ha ha ha. And uh, fuck off with that shit, man. <laughs> But then you oh take that take that to the next level. What was the next thing to come out? Inkjet, right? And inkjet. Everybody had a fucking inkjet. Yeah, and we it, still it, do. And it, it, it would it would print suck. out, and you'd fucking lift it up, and the ink would like run down the page. Well, not literally, but as soon as you touched it, it would fucking run down the page because yeah. they hadn't they hadn't figured out micro printing, and they hadn't figured out micro dosing the fucking ink, and they hadn't figured out quick dry paint or ink or pigment or whatever the fuck it is. That shit yeah. pissed me the fuck off. And if you tried to print two pages. You just made copies, reverse copies on the back of each of those fucking pages. Because as soon as the paper came out and sat down, or you had one of the the really good ones that would hold the page and wait for the fucking one before it to dry, before it dropped that one, that shit took fucking forever. And there's no way of getting around it. You couldn't just tell it, hey, I'm, uh, go ahead and print that fucking page. No, it would just sit there and wait for you, even though you're moving them yourself. Fuck, f- fucking fuck printers. Just yeah, fuck printers, yeah, all right? Exactly. But you, you almost described, you almost described Ditto. Do you remember Ditto? No, like when we were like when we were in elementary school, the you, you remember the worksheets that you would get that were purple. Mm. It was mm. made from a ditto machine, which is basically like a. It worked almost like silly putty. Yeah. So it wasn't like photocopy. It was like it would like take the impression of the thing and somehow did this like reverse. Some I, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> seen one of these things in like. 30 something years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I have no idea. And then the next thing after uh, dot matrix or not dot matrix uh, inkjet was laser printers. 
Mm-hmm. And now we're talking, okay? Now you got the the lovely crispness of Xerox with not all of the fucking fuzz of Xerox, and it was fast as shit. It would just print pages out like you'd get like seven, eight, ten pages a minute. It took mm. three to four minutes for the fucking thing to warm up. Had like a JFS popping off the side. <laughs> JFS, <laughs> a jet full starter for you non Air Force types. Like, uh, hey, Cruise, Cruise wants to know if we ever saw the wax ink printers. You had to melt the solid ink first before it'll actually print. Yes. I don't think I, I ever. Had I that. saw exactly one and it printed like shit. Yeah, I've I've heard of this, but I don't think I've ever actually seen one. Yeah, take take the worst parts of a laser printer and a, an inkjet printer, and then throw some fucking dot matrix at it, and throw it on a SCSI port. And, oh god! And just fuck yourself. That's what. <laughs> SCSI. Oh, SCSI. Like it's got the perfect name. Yeah. SCSI. Like that's. Yeah. And so... you, you know the funny thing is, SCSI was perfect for so many things. If you could get it working, and it, yeah, there's, like, dude, there's still things that in the Air Force there are still peripherals that are required to be connected using a SCSI port. Yep. And, yep. Uh, and, so- and and that that wax, dude, the wax came. You could get it in multiple colors. Towards the end, you could get it in multiple colors, and when it melted, it all looked kind of the same shade of shit brown. So you never knew which color you're supposed to put in which one, but without like opening, the, oh, fuck, fuck. Mm. All right, so let's change to something that that <sighs> I've missed. Well, I don't know if I so much, but I I have nostalgia for, okay. and that's my old that's my old Palm Five. Hmm. It's basically an iPhone before there were iPhones. Oh my gosh! Tech, yes. Play all internet and now, and cell phone connectivity. We, we both started with the Palm Three, right? Palm Three C, the first color one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was it five or three? Maybe it was three. I think I think I started with the Palm 3, and then you got the 3C, and then I went out and got the 3C and sold my 3. I, I, don't, I don't think mine was color, though. I think my, I might have gotten like the... Maybe, was there a 3X, like a 3X something no, was, or another? Uh, I don't remember. I remember I dropped mine off the fucking nose of a, of a C5 one time, and it landed in its neoprene case and was just fine. <laughs> yeah, dude, it came with that little flip cover. Yeah, and I had it. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, and and you flipped the cover up, and it actually had like instructions on how to use it. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it gave you the little cheat sheet for the uh, what do they call them? The, the was it je- not gestures? What do they call the, it? The, the wiggles or uh, that? Yeah. So oh I just gosh. looked up what mine was. It's the Palm Three XE. Mm. Uh, that's what I had. I never had a color one. But it was, dude, it was amazing. It was a, per, a PDA, a personal yeah. digital assistant, made by Palm, obviously. Everyone wants to talk about Palm Pilot. I've never met somebody in my life that's actually had a Palm Pilot. Everybody's had, like, a Palm 3 or a Palm 5 or a Palm C or whatever. Mm. Like, seven people had a Palm Pilot. Stop calling them fucking Palm Pilots, people. There was only one model called Pilot, and it was... Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> techno rants today. Um, <clears throat> but I loved it, dude. The games that you could play on that thing. The games you could make on that thing. Kyle's Quest. Yep. The best freaking game. Like, dude, it's in my top ten of best games of all time. Even though we never finished it. <laughs> the, it doesn't matter. I the still. Game- much about the the built in adventure. It's about making your own adventure. That's what I'm saying. We never finished the built in. Like we we had all these huge plans for games for each other, and we just never. I still have all my notes. I still oh have all the all the grid grid maps and everything else all done. Um, my favorite feature about that thing, though, honestly, was the fucking IR blaster. The IR blaster. The infrared blaster. What, what you, did you? You, you can sit in a, in a doctor's waiting room. When they when they got the TV on CNN or whatever, yeah. Until, oh, oh. Uh, until the scan, and once it activated, you would know what the frequency was, and then That's you could right. just fucking sit there and tell it to change channels and shit. I forgot all about that. Yep. Or sitting That's- across from somebody while they're uh, 
they're playing the game or doing whatever they're doing on theirs, and you just fucking blast them with like an invite to a porn site. Uh, wait, wait, wait! You had yours had internet capability? No, but you could, okay. it, it had. It it did though. Mine it, did it, not. It didn't have like a traditional browser, but you could. You could Mine, send links because I would send links to fucking people, random links to like <laughs> shitty sites and stuff. Maybe it was just a text. Uh, yeah, because I remember mine had the capability. You could send a message to another Palm device, like a Palm OS device that was in proximity. Like you had to have, I think you used IR, yeah, right? It was IR. Yeah. You could like point them at each other. You could send like a file or a message or something like that. Or like a picture, like you could draw a picture on the little touchpad mm -hmm. deal. You could send that, uh, but yeah, I had no connectivity to in order to like install apps or do anything outside of the device itself. You had to yeah. dock it to the cradle. But, that was connected via what? Uh, 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 I don't even remember what kind of port that that was. It wasn't SCSI. No, <laughs> I know that. It was either serial or parallel. It might have been serial. <laughs> serial. Yeah, it, I think it was, it was a pre USB. Yeah. Yes, very much pre, pre USB. Because you were only dealing with like, what, 64K of memory, but it would take fucking like 30 minutes to sync. Yeah, yeah. But the but the uh, the apps were super small. Oh, and this before they were called apps. It was like, uh, what, did, what did we call them? Oh, fuck, I don't applications. Know. Maybe we just called them like the full word, <laughs> applications. Nobody was smart enough to just shorten that shit down to Listen, apps. Look, I found, I found some new applications for my palm. <laughs> that said said a ten year old me. Yeah, and, and you know you know what really pissed me off about that. As soon as I started getting good at that damn palm, right? A buddy of mine at work got a compact presario, a full fledged pocket PC. Oh my god! Yeah. See, at the same time that you were messing with the palm. Yeah, I was at Kadena. Yeah, and that's when I switched over to my Dell Axum three, and then my Axum. Uh, X or whatever, yeah, XM something, XM5. Um, and that was a full fledged pocket PC. And then I switched to a pocket PC phone, and then my ex wife broke it. And then I went to, um, no mobile devices and eventually to Droid and then, then to iPhone. You know, uh, Bill Gates was actually in the news yesterday, I think, for saying that his biggest mistake was not making Windows the uh, the iOS competitor in the phone market. It, it was. Well, for like two seconds. But right, but they weren't doing like anything with Android, it. Yeah, Android like, became the competitor. Pocket, pocket PC was fucking amazing for what it was. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it was still trying to hold on to this, this aesthetic and functionality of a goddamn desktop computer. Right, and, yep. And... Apple comes well, along with iOS or well with with phone OS or whatever it was, um, and says no, we're just going to make it custom to where it's not supposed to look like a fucking desktop. It's it's, right. it's not a desktop. And Windows was like, no, it's still a desktop, just smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, because you could yeah, like I mean, you had File Explorer and everything else on there, man. It was fucking amazing. It was great. It was it was a low powered PC in your fucking pocket. It was great, and right. it, but it wasn't. And they didn't develop it for shit. You had, I would go to Pocket PC Thoughts and find my fucking patches to fix the Windows installation on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh um, God. yeah. So that that's yeah. Gates said that was that's his biggest error or biggest mistake was yeah. not developing that into uh, basically what Android has become. He's not wrong. Yeah. Um, so, but who cares? He's still one of the richest people on the planet. Right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the thing that I miss and uh, that I'm nostalgic about. And I would say I genuinely miss it because it was, not only was it a symbol of its time, but it kind of really fed so much of my curiosity about computers and about technology and, and everything else. And Porn. That, no, no. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. You said that you miss it. Uh, no. We still have. We still have. Yeah, we still have. It's it, fuck. It's more available now than ever. Like I'm, I'm trying to miss it. Like I'm dodging it on the internet and shit. Like don't know, right. no, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fucking. 
Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say my Dell Axum Five. Really? Okay. Yeah. Not only because it was like the Palm with a better experience, it was my first foray into mobile 3D gaming. Um, it synced up to Outlook back when we could connect shit by USB to our. Uh, and it was one of my first USB devices as well. Um, USB 1.0. Yeah. No uh, stop for 1.0. But but it would yeah it it would uh it it would sync up to my work computer so I could download my Outlook back before work email got too fucking crazy, and I'd actually be able to go take a shit at work and work on my work email, and then come back to my office, let it sync up while I went out for a smoke break or whatever, come back and like all my emails were answered, because I just yeah. did it while I was on the shitter. Now you can't do that because now there's like seven thousand fucking emails about dumb shit every day. But right, yeah, and also you can't connect any device to uh, a government PC and everything else. Yeah, there's, yeah, fucking joke. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks it, for that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, that was that was that was that. Yeah, that was fun, man. That was fun. I, I, want to do that every now and then just kind of look back at at technology that was yeah but you know what we should do we should do a, a show about when we started rmp like what like state of the world like politics technology uh mm. yeah, movies that were coming out like it seems like that was just a couple years ago i like, guess nothing's different dude no it was it was different we went we <laughs> went from a time when i didn't feel bad about talking about politics to the to where it is now where I am trying to avoid it in every conversation for the next two and two months because I'm afraid of it affecting the queer I just finished. Like, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And if you're young, if you, I'm looking at, looking right at the camera right now, I'm speaking right into the mic. So if you're watching or listening, listen and watch and absorb. Politics is the only thing that you get more curious about as you get older while you get less powerful in it. The peak mm -hmm. of your interest will be when you're older, as you understand more, and as you understand how it affects things, the peak of your power is on your 18th birthday because you have an entire lifetime of change that you can incorporate, whereas once you're old enough well, to understand it, you don't have any fucking time left to effectively change things. Well, if you, not only that. Not only that, eight, the young people are the target demographic for, they're like the target for uh, everything. For everything, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if the young people are hip to it, then that's going to change, yep. like, a, a politician's platform, right? So, yeah, yeah. that's profound, dude. That's, that's 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah, Willie says, uh, I feel like Amos is only talking to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, he's perpetually the young guy in the room. Um, yeah, dude. So that that sounds like some profound wisdom that you might dispense elsewhere on the internet. Where where would people find that? On Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Yeah, uh, if you're interested in my ramblings, which I I had actually quite a few this week, uh, yeah, hit me did. up on Twitter uh, R M underscore Del Noche uh, underscore because I was little late to the game um don't know you don't know 77 pretty much everywhere else find me I like you your, say a little uh, late to the game you're like like fucking five years late to the game. yeah like a, <laughs> yeah that's a real late to the game. um yeah man where, uh, where would people find the show uh on twitter at ritual misery and if you uh if you hit us up there we will probably respond we might even tell you which one of us it is that's responding no guarantee you will <laughs> no. I, I guarantee you that we will respond to you in our discord though if you go over to discord uh, yeah, yeah. bit.ly slash rmp discord uh, check us out there uh, join our conversation we will definitely respond to whatever you say to us in there and you can cruise on over to our website ritualmisery.com where we find all kinds of other ways to fuck up really simple shit uh, and we happen to link there to all the other projects we're working on I just finished the last episode of let's talk about thrones it was released this week go check it out it's got a bunch of extra material at the end if you listen all the way through and um yeah so cruise on over to there ritualmisery.com yeah we are live almost every thursday night at 7 p.m uh central uh, no pacific central pacific pacific central that'd be mountain pacific. 
Mountain. Mountain. The only time zone that matters, according to Scott Johnson. That would be 8 p.m. Mountain time. <laughs> so, let's try. Uh, take, let, two. Let, yeah, take two. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music because you're awesome and you've got a documentary coming out because you're just that fucking cool. Besides, you're also in Japan right now. And thank you for listening. For Ken, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya! Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. R I T U A L M I S E L Y. Yay! Holy shit! <clears throat> uh, is there a way that we could uh, that uh, by, and by we I mean you could fuck up that outro anymore? <laughs> yes, I could. I could. I could try harder next time. Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh man.